What's going on everyone? ODC here and I'm back with another action figure review. Today's review we're going to take a look at the G.I. Joe Classified Series Walmart exclusive Range Viper. Um, this is a figure I was pretty highly anticipating. I really have always liked the design of the Range Vipers and just the actual characters of the Range Viper. Some of my favorite Cobra characters to be honest with you. Um... I like them overall because they're they're kind of like, I don't know, to me, the Range Vipers have always been that top tier kind of uh, soldier that you really want on your side. Um, these guys and gals, because there are, there are female um, Range Vipers, uh, these guys and gals are the ones that you want to stick out there and kind of just let them do their thing. You know, they can survive on their own. They can figure things out. They're very good uh, as far as adapting to their surroundings and stuff like that. And uh, I, I just really have always dig that about the character. Uh, but anyway, the figure itself, let's get him out in front. Um, looks really well done. I'm very pleased with how well they actually have done this figure. And uh, everything that he comes with makes perfect sense. Um, the only issue I have is that he doesn't have two uh, vertical hinge joints um, and he doesn't come with any extra hands as we see the uh, classified series is very inconsistent with giving hands and then not giving hands. So um, I would appreciate it more in the future if we did get extra hands, at least just one extra set. So we have a lateral set and a vertical set, especially with, you know, figures that uh, just need that as far as uh, the variety goes for different posability and different uh, kind of looks the figure itself and i'll just give you a full rotation here really well done i like the the little details on the backpack here that you can see um they did a really good job on the oh, bunch of stuff fell over uh they did a really good job on the backpack here i like the little details like i said um, everything fits on him. I've got him fully loaded out. Everything that he comes with can be stored on him. There's no issues whatsoever on that front. You don't have to worry about an extra head that you got to put in a bag somewhere, which is perfectly fine. And I, like I said, even though I do wish he came with extra hands, even if he was just given two vertical hinge joints, I think that would have been perfectly fine for me. But, um, apparently he's a lefty <laughs> uh, like i said everything can be stored on him it's very well done as far as how they thought out the storage for him and then the figure itself here is the head of the range viper it looks really good they did a really good job on this um i'm actually pretty happy that they didn't paint the brain portion of the helmet a different color i think originally it's supposed to be like a tan color but or like a brainy looking color, but I actually like the, the gray instead. So that looks good. The skull looks really good. The eyes are painted well. I don't have any really any paint slop, which I'm very fortunate to have this. The figure itself, as far as his articulation does go, his head can look up about that far. It is on a ball peg joint. There is no hinge, which is unfortunate because I'd like to actually be able to get him to look further up than this. Um, and then it looks down. And then he can tilt side to side right there. And let's see if we got jive turkeys. Oh, yeah, we got some turkeys up in here. Um, and then we've got arms that go up about that far, which I want to see if... Yeah, there we go. Okay, so you do have to push a little bit further with this arm. It's My arm's a little stiff. There we go. So you can T-joint nicely. Or T-pose, I should say. Nicely. And then a little bit, wow, I do not like how tough that is. That is very tough trying to get that that arm down. <laughs> uh, I'll have to loosen that up a little bit more, I guess. Um, we got a bicep swivel, a double jointed elbow. Uh, he can do a full 360 in the arm if you need him to. Um, he can swivel at the wrist. He also has a vertical hinge joint, like I said, on this side. And then a lateral on the other side. He does have a little bit of an ab crunch. I want to say, yes, there is an actual ab crunch in there where he can crunch forward about that far. And then you can actually crunch him back 
um, because of the, the way the vest is set up, because it's a higher vest, you can actually get an ab crunch out of him, which is nice. Um, he can swivel at the waist, which is nice. Belt does get in the way a little bit, but not too bad. He can also pivot a little bit, and that's not just from the hips. It actually is in the waist a little bit. He does have drop downs, which I'm still kind of eerie. <laughs> it's going to take some time for me to get getting uh, more and more, um, I guess, welcoming when it comes to the drop downs from Hasbro. I feel like they haven't quite nailed it quite yet, but the drop downs still get the job done. This is still a better split than any Spider-Man figure can do. Well, at least the majority of them, uh, which is still a shame. Um, upper thigh swivel. And like I said, <laughs> be careful with the upper thigh swivels. Some of these are, are very tight as far, as far as the classifieds figures go. I like to ho hold on to the top part of the hip because I've noticed in the past that when I have articulated the figure... What you're doing is if you don't hold on to the top part of the hip, this see how this hip is moving up top here? That's putting pressure on that drop-down T-joint. And the drop-down T-joint is kind of like on an angle. So I always recommend if you're swiveling your hips, hold on to that thigh so you're not putting so much pressure on the joint and then swivel. It, it takes an extra second to do, but it, it'll help with the longevity of your figure, I promise. It's just the way it's engineered. He does have double jointed knees right there. He does have a boot swivel, which is nice, and an ankle pivot, pointy toey, pointy heel, ankle pivot, two peg holes, and a partridge and a pear tree. And that is that. He can pose. He can do whatever you need him to do, really. I mean, he's not really hindered by any means. Let's get him in a, you know, the, the atypical crouching tiger hidden dragon pose i'm just joking i don't know why i'm saying that but let's get him into some sort of like i'm ready to fight stance he'll be looking at you um it almost would be nice to get lateral hinge joints with some fist hands and then get the vertical hinge joints with the gripping hands so we can actually get him into like a a settling fight pose, you know, like that. But um, there we go. We'll put him up here. There we go. Or if he's gonna grapple somebody, you can have his arms out like this, like he's ready to. He's ready to grapple. Let's get him situated here first. And there you go, like he's easy to pose. Let's try a kicking pose now. Let's see how well the kick, and I've actually seen people complaining that, oh, he can't get the kicks as well as some of the other class. I'm like, yeah, okay, but like, what do you need him? Did you need him to Van Dam? Is this the type of character that's going to be Van Damming? I don't think so. So what is essentially the problem? Some people's nitpicks, they, they, they mix up, sometimes reviewers mix up nitpicks with, with them being actual real deal issues with the figure. If the figure, if the, if the figure is supposed to meet form, it's, it's form meets function, excuse me, as I fumble over my words, it's form meets function. If the figure can function and the form meets it, then there's no issue. If you're nitpicking, then just say you're nitpicking, but it's not an actual real deal issue if the figure can still accomplish what it needs to accomplish. Like, he's not going to be doing Van Dams with armor on. Let, let's be honest here. He's got armor on his legs. He's got, what, two harnesses on his legs. I have tried to run in harnesses before. It sucks. He's got a tack vest on. He's got knee pad armor. He's got shin boot armor. Like, the dude's not going to be doing <laughs> um, huge martial art martial art style kicks. Like, it's just not, that's not his, his wheelhouse, if you will. So, I don't know. Personally, I think the figure stands and does what it needs to do. Doesn't really need to do much else. As far as his uh, accessories go, excuse me. 
Um, the accessories are really nice. I really like this handgun. It looks really good. Very well done. Let me show a little bit more light on the subject here. Very well done. Has an extended mag right there and it does fit right into his holster as you saw in per the beginning of the video. The uh, bandolier can go right here, either side if you want it to. Personally, I always remember the bandolier going this way on the figures. But you could, I mean, you do whatever you want. He does come with this, like I said, um, light machine gun. Looks like a, almost like a para version, a para uh, version of the saw. Um, the ammo is removable. You can remove that if you want to. It's up to you. World is your oyster. It's your figure. Do with it, do with it however you want. The bandana just simply clips around his neck. You don't have to have it on, but uh, I think it looks, finishes off the, the look and the aesthetic. Um, he can hold his sigh perfectly fine, as you can see right there. No issues there. And you can have him picking his teeth with it if you want. <laughs> Whatever you want to do, even though this is a helmet. Um, <laughs> I wonder if eventually down the line, if we do get a skull buster, if we'll actually get an unmasked head for skull buster, that would be pretty cool. I think because in the, I know the, uh, what was it? The 25th anniversary and even rise of Cobra stuff. They had removable helmets, uh, but they just had a balaclava underneath. It'd be cool if they went one step uh, further with some of these and, just actually gave us an unmasked head with some of them. I know these are troop builders, but there's some of them like Skullbuster, which is, he is a different color. Um, it'd be cool if we could actually get that. Um, that's something that you can build on and it's not an issue. Um, we've got this ax, really cool looking ax. I love it. I mean, he is a wilderness survival type character. So, um, but he can hold his ax in either hand. It doesn't matter. I'm just kind of picking a hand and going with it. It's a little bit loose. It's not too bad though. If you hold it by the, uh, well, I guess it is a little bit too loose. I'll just be honest with you. Um, but yeah, maybe this is one of those cases where gripping hands would be a little bit better of a choice here, but he can hold it. No issue really too much of an issue. A little bit of an issue with a little bit of loose. So it's more loose on this side than the other. But if you kind of just rework the fingers, he'll hold on to it. And you can also store it right on the backpack. The backpack storage is this little peg right here. And you just want to peg it right through there like so. And it stays perfectly. It's a little bit loose. So if you're traveling with the figure or if he's going on a trip with you, just be uh, forewarned that this does pop off like that. Uh, it doesn't take much to pop that off. If you want to put this on his backpack, the peg holes right there. I would like to see them go a little bit deeper with the peg holes. I understand that there's uh, inner workings inside with the arm joints and such, but I feel like the major issue with these backpacks is that the the pegs are. I've actually had a peg snap off on me on Mr. Selkirk, the Tiger Force version. I think the pegs need to be thicker and. I want to say about this length and then make this hole thicker and a little bit deeper. Some of the holes are a little bit too shallow. Um, so there's that. And then he has a peg hole on the back of his head and you just want to kind of plug that in, give it a good little push and it'll sink right into the back of the head, which is perfect. This is his oxygen, which is really awesome. A nice little touch with that. He does have his grenade launcher right here. Um, it looks really good. I, I'm very actually pleased with this. I would say I mean, if you're comparing it with other grenade launchers that we've seen in the past um, with Valiverse and stuff like that, I think the Valiverse one is better. Um, we've I have a, I think I have one from Gridiron 2. I would still go with the Valiverse one personally. That's just me being objective. Um, a lot of people have pointed out the gumminess of the the. Uh, weapons. I want to say it's not nearly as bad as the Spartan collection line. That that line has some of the worst, the absolute worst gummy um, weaponry I've ever seen. 
the barrel does spin. I've seen reviewers also say that the barrel does not spin. It does spin. Not that it's really a priority that it needs to spin. <laughs> I think it's kind of a useless feature that's always featured in these, but it, it is there. You can do it. Um, he can hold it perfectly fine. If you want to have him hold it in his right or left hand, he can do so. Just like a so. If I can get that silly little finger to do what I want it to. Sometimes the, the, the trigger finger does what it wants. But he can hold it just nicely. Um, you can have him looking down the sight. So let's get him have, it, have him do that really quick. So I can showcase that. That is going to pop off his back, of course. We can get it up here. And with most of these grenade launchers, it's kind of... I think it's I think it's cute that um, <laughs> they actually have a sight on there, but <laughs> I feel like with a grenade launcher, no one actually uses the sights on them. It's just kind of like a point and shoot, like a shoddy, you know? That's why a lot of shotguns don't have a lot of sights on them because it's kind of like a point and shoot. It's like a... It's a, it's a grenade launcher. It's going to launch a grenade at somebody <laughs> or a smoke grenade or something. It, you just need it to shoot straight and in the general vicinity of somebody. So um, I do kind of wish the porthole was a little bit bigger, but I get it. You can put other like Valiver stuff uh, for flash flashes or whatever uh, for the uh, the gun or rocket launcher coming going off. Excuse me. I can't talk. But um, it would have been cool if the barrel was a little bit bigger. It kind of looks like it shoots BBs. But <laughs> which I actually used to airsoft, and I had a grenade launcher, which was pretty fun for airsoft. And it did used to shoot like I think it was like a, you would you would load these up with like a <laughs> like a it looked like a grenade, but it was actually just a ton of BBs, and you would shoot a ton of BBs all at once. It was pretty fun though. Oh, the airsofting days! How I miss you. Uh, but like I said, he can hold everything. There's no issues with him holding any of his weaponry. Uh, like I said, with the gumminess of the uh, weaponry that he does come with, I would like to see maybe a little bit more of a strengthened tolerance, a little bit more of a um, higher... Not not as hard as maybe Valiverse's um, plastics, because some of some of the Valiverse um, weaponry objectively does snap if you're not careful where the stock is going. If it's going underneath the arm and you press down, it'll going to snap that right off. So you don't want them too hard, and then you don't want them too soft. So it's you got to find that middle ground. So I think they're still evolving some of the weapons and stuff like that, which is fine. All right, first set of size comparisons. We've got Kid Omega from the X-Men Wave of Bone Breaker on the right. And then on the left, we've got the Target exclusive Ultra, Super Ultra Fancy Articulated Black Widow. All right, next up, we've got uh, two NECA figures here. On the left, we've got Casey Jones uh, from the Mirage comics line and then on the right we've got the mirage comics four pack from neca this is donatello all right next up we've got two street fighter action figures uh on the left we have the soda street fighter ken masters action figure and then on the right we've got the jada toys Phalong. okay next up switching up gears we're going with the uh two mcfarlane releases on the right we've got the commando spawn and then on the left, we've got the newest Robin release. All right, next up, we've got the boys in blue. Um, we've got uh, two Cosmic Legions here. On the right, we've got the Grave Ring version of Olic Thigar. And then on the left, we've got my own creator character. Um, that is Neshoba Borg. All right, next up, we've got an Articulated Icons Ninja. And he's sporting his blue mask. It's Blue Mask uh, uh, Monday here. And then <laughs> um, on the left, we've got the Hasbro release of the Temple of Doom, Indiana Jones. All right, next up, we've got two more comparisons. We've got a old school Toy Biz-esque Conan. And then on the left, we've got Savage Dragon. Okay, next up, we've got two Valiverse action figures. On the left, we've got Eclipse. And then on the right, yes, more skull masks. 
we've got Skullbuster himself. All right, and last up, we've got two G.I. Joe Classifieds action figures. We On the right, we've got Cobra in Scrap Iron, and then on the left, we've got some of the Joes. We've got Big Ben, Big Benjamin. Okay, so for my final thoughts on the Range Viper from G.I. Joe Classifieds. Uh, the only nitpick I have is there's a little bit of gumminess, just a little bit in the tip of his gun right here. But in 2023, people need to kind of note that it's a nitpick. I don't think it's nearly as big of an issue as the actual issue at hand here, which is the fact that he's a Walmart exclusive. To me, and maybe other people will disagree, that's perfectly fine, but to me, no troop builder, unless it's like a Python patrol, which that actually makes sense because it's a sub team, the main troopers should never be a store exclusive. If you want to make them an online exclusive, fine. That's fine. A big Bad Toy Store, Entertainment Earth, because those type of places tend to get the amount of quantities that are acceptable for people to actually obtain these figures. I had to jump through hoops and I just happened to get one from a local comic book store. This guy got them early, okay? I don't know how, I didn't ask. I just said, oh, is that for sale? He said, yes, I just got him in. I snagged one. So this might be the only one I end up getting because these were very difficult to get a hold of. <laughs> um, so that's the major thing. If this was, like I said, a fan channel exclusive, or this should just be in the main line. This is a troop builder that a lot of people are going to want to get. You know, the range troopers are pretty popular troopers. I'm hoping in the future that they don't do that with the Saw Viper because he's one of my, if not my favorite trooper. But personally, I don't know. I, I would have liked to get more of these guys, but they're just very hard to get. And the only other way to get a range, uh, range Viper is if you buy that three pack. And that's probably not the color people are going to want. They're gonna want this one. But regardless, the figure itself does everything you need it to do. It's form meeting function to the nth degree. Objectively, the figure, it looks great aesthetically. I don't have any issues. I have no quality control concerns. I don't have any pain issues. All of the, like the Cobra symbol on his, sh on his shoulder is centered nicely. The eyes are painted beautifully. The backpack detail is where it needs to be. Um, I, I really don't see any issues with this figure. Um, I think it's a home run, so I'm giving it two thumbs up, and I'm counting the rock on hand as my other thumb up since I can't find my other hand. I don't know where the hell it is, but we're going to go with that. And maybe if Skullbuster ever comes out and uh, he's easier to, ob to obtain, I'll make him the troop builder. So but that's it, pretty much it for me. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications, please, if you like this review and you'd like to see more. But yeah, that's it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed the review and thank you so much if you made it all the way to the end of the review. Really do appreciate it. Uh, I do have members. So if you guys want to join the uh, member and become a, a channel member, you can um, just hit the thanks button down there. You don't have to, not forcing you to, but if you would like to, it does help support the channel and it could improve on some of the production that I would like to do for the future. Uh, we're almost at 5K, and thank you so much. I think we're less than 10 subs away from 5K. So, um, yeah, thank you so much to everybody for your support, and I will see you guys on the flip side.